We've had a bit of a change of plans on this build. Uh, upon closer inspection of the Asgard, I decided that it wasn't exactly the best fit for, for me for this build. And I've decided to go with a more traditional 4-in-1 ESC. Uh, this is the Acon 4-in-1 ESC and uh, the Betaflight F3. And part of my motivation for that is that I'm really, I mean, I've heard such good things about the Chameleon frame as a great freestyle frame. Same thing about these rifle motors. I'm really hoping to have this be like a build that I keep for a while. And I really don't want to compromise on things like telemetry. Just have that eaten away at me every time I use it. So we'll save the Asgard for another build. And we're going to do 4-in-1 ESC here. And that gives me an opportunity to show you guys another good skill, which is uh, how to wire up a 4-in-1 ESC with the Betaflight F3 or any other board with a built-in PDB and a current sensor. Uh, and wiring it up is easy if you don't care about the current sensor not working. You could just wire everything to the 4-in-1 ESC and then just do a little, you know, 22 gauge, a little thin wire up here to, to the positive and negative battery pads or, or even the ESC pads. It doesn't matter. Uh, no, it, it would need to be the battery pads, sorry. But, but you basically don't run the ESCs off of this PDB, you just run them off of that PDB. The problem with that is that you don't have current sensing and you paid for it, you may as well get it. In order for current sensing to occur, we have to make the current pass through this shunt resistor, which means that we need to come in on the red wire here and then we need to go out any of the ESC pads. And it turns out that uh, the, the next question that everybody always asks is, well, can you handle the current? Uh, because we might be pulling 80 amps of current on this pad, but each of these pads might only be rated for 30, 40 amps. And the answer to that is that yes, if you're selective about what you do. The issue is not, as I understand it, from talking to board designers and asking this question, uh, the issue is not the pad itself having a certain maximum output current, but the current going across the board the resistance going through the traces or going across the plane can heat the board up too much. You can see if you look closely, there's not that much difference in size, at least, between this pad and these pads. Um, it may be the case that these pads have more copper inside the board. I don't know. But uh, basically, if you think about it, the shunt resistor, you know, can take the full rated current of the board. So if the board is rated for 100 amps, you know the shunt resistor is rated for 100 amps because by, its, by definition, all of the current going through the board has to pass through the shunt resistor in order for current sensing to work. So one approach is to solder right here to this part of the shunt resistor. And another approach that I've heard is perfectly acceptable is to solder right here to the closest ESC pad to the shunt resistor and that will keep the distance that the current has to go to a minimum. Uh, obviously, soldering to the shunt resistor itself is going to be more like high performance. There's going to be less resistance, but I'm willing to bet that many of us won't notice much difference uh, going to the ESC pad here. So I think that's what I'm going to do, and I just need to figure out what gauge wire I'm going to use. Now, obviously, the, the higher the gauge wire, the better, uh, but there's practicalities as well. So we're going to go from the battery to here and from here to the ESC positive here so that current will come in from the battery, go through the shunt resistor out here and then in to the positive on the 4-in-1 ESC and then out to the ESCs. And the first thing I'm going to check is how it fits in here because I don't want to compromise my vibration isolation by putting a big thick piece of wire in here that then causes excess contact between the boards. And sure enough, hmm, I don't love it. That's really going to, it's pretty th stiff. It's So I'm not going to go with 12 gauge here. I am going to go with 14 gauge. Oh, and look, look, you guys. You guys have been shouting at me for so long. Get yourself a proper pair of wire strippers. Well, I did, so shut up. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder like so and then come up like that and around to the board. Um, that way I'm coming underneath. And that is the underside of the board, is it? Yes, it is. So that actually creates an interesting possibility 
I definitely want to make sure that the board is maintainable. I want to make sure I can get the board off. But if I'm soldering to here, oh, that's ugly. That's not, can I kind of go like that? Oh, I, I think I might could. I think I might could. I think I might could. Yeah, I do. So the negative wire is going to come from the ESC, 4 and one ESC. The current needs to go in through the shunt resistor and out to the ESCs, but the return current can go straight to the battery. There's no reason, there's no shunt resistor on the negative side. So we, so we can wire into the negative side straight to the ESC. We still need to provide ground to the flight controller somehow, and we'll do that just by wiring a small negative wire to, to anywhere just to give it ground. So let's start with a negative wire for the battery. Oh yeah, that was so much harder than doing it with the wire stripper. Ouch. Jesus. <gasps> Ow, fuck me, it's still fucking hot. Wow. Okay. These beta flight boards are notoriously difficult to solder to, especially the ground pads. We'll see how this goes. It wasn't too bad. Oh, see, that's what I'm talking about. Did you see that? What was that? Yeah, go figure. Okay, so this is how the board is going to be installed in flight. You can see the forward-facing arrow here. And this is the pad we're going to solder to. It's going to go like that. Yeah, it can fold out like that. Boom, like that. Is this the right length? No, it's a little too long. Let's see about that long. Now I wonder if I could actually get both. Positive ESC and the shunt resistor at the same time. It kind of feels like I can. If I just take off just a little more. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try and solder to both the shunt resistor and the ESC pad to kind of get the best of both worlds.
I need to go up. <laughs> There we go. Got it. And that, I feel, is a joint that can take the full rated current of the board. I'm going to run this sideways so it comes out the side when I'm done. Oh yeah, that's not bad at all. And then we still need to provide ground to the board, but we can provide that through any convenient uh, pad, any ground pad, and we don't need a big thick wire for that because this is this guy is not going to draw very much current. So it, it, it itself, the ground path, is not going to be carrying very much current. You'll notice how I've made it so I can fold this out of the way to work on it. That's going to help me out in the, in the future as I have to do, you know, whatever work I have to do on this board. I'm going to solder this over to the same place I put the positive wire so that as I fold fold this open and closed as I work on it perhaps that I will the wires will move together and not get tangled or anything or stretched or anything like that. I'm going to take my iron up to 850 as I do this ground pad. The Betaflight F3 ground pads are notoriously hard to solder to. Um, I almost wonder if they're coated with something as I hold the iron on here I think you'll notice you might notice a little something burn back well I'm not sure if you saw it there but I think I've seen it before I wonder if it's got some kind of conformal coating that gets in the way but at 850 on the iron it's not a problem and people have accused me in the past of confusing Confusing iron temperature with iron power, that a powerful iron will hold temperature even, even on a big pad. And well, maybe that's true, but this is not a, this is a Hako 88D. It's not a wimpy iron. No, no corners cut here. And if I go to 850, it works a lot better. So, you take go take from that what you will. It 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 really quickly does these ground pads at 850, and it takes a lot longer and a lot more work to do it at at eight or 750. Okay, so this is the finished piece of work. The battery comes in here to the positive pad. Current goes through the shunt resistor, out to the ESC pad. Positive wire goes over to the positive pad on the 4-in-1 ESC. Ground or negative goes from the 4-in-1 out to the battery and a smaller wire, this, this wire even is too big, I just had it laying around, it's something like 20 gauge or maybe, I think it's 20 gauge. Uh, you could you go with something much smaller, uh, it's only going to carry at most a few amps uh, 
because the, that's how much the flight controller is going to draw. Negative to any negative pad, it doesn't really matter which. And that is the final, final setup. Now I'm going to double check this and make sure I didn't screw something up and wire something to the wrong place. 